Was you being friends with Randy Orton what led to you originally being part of Evolution? I don't know. You know, that that I don't know. Um, actually, you know, before the, I, I, you know, I think we, we just kind of were becoming friends in, he, in Louisville. Um, when uh, I had flown up to Stanford and they had told me about, I remember I was there with Mordecai. They told Mordecai about what the gimmick they wanted him to work on. Orlando Jordan, but he told him about what he was going to do and I was going to be in the evolution, you know, so, and then, and then that's when I was going to be in evolution when Orton, you know, obviously uh, was joining evolution as well, this group, like that's when we kind of like became friends and we started hanging, we figured, well, you know what, we're going to be in a group. Um, so let's just, you know, let's hang. We started going to the gym together and stuff and, and Louisville and, um, and then on, on TV, we just continued our friendship and stuff, you know, which turned into a, a brotherhood, you know, it was crazy. Um, him and I were just really, really good friends. We really enjoyed like traveling together and stuff. And it was just fun traveling. And I think it was a little too much fun. That's why, you know, eventually I got kicked out of the evolution idea, but, um, you know, I mean, it was great times. He's a good, really good guy. And he, he's in my opinion, top five, easy top five of, of all time wrestlers in WWE. So how long was it from them pitching you the idea of being an evolution to them just changing their mind and deciding, you know what, we're going to go with somebody else? I'm not sure of the timeline, but it, like the timeline I always envisioned my, like the way it was going. Um, I mean, that's when we became friends and but then they started sending us up on TV. Um, and I want to say I was doing like maybe just heat matches or something, or, or I, don't, I, don't, I don't even remember. But um, I remember just personally, even though I knew I was part of the group, I remember just getting scared about it because I remember every week on Raw, they would do these polls. I could almost hear Jerry King Lawler now, like, who's the next member of Evolution? You know, like, and it shows a poll like of Test or Kevin Nash or Jericho or somebody like a big stars, like, like stars. Like, you know, I can't remember the exact names. And I was like, man, like, I'm the next guy. Like, but like they're naming all these, they're having these polls that are hyping it up. And like, yeah, I was, you know, I had a, a little, we were tag team champions in WCW, but it was not, you know, I was not that known, you know? So I felt like they're over, they're hyping it up really big. And then like, also like, I, I, I never connected with Triple H, you know, like um, I, maybe I always felt, I felt like we had a relationship where like, Maybe he he was like an older brother and I was like an annoying younger brother, you know? Um, and just Orton and I, like I said, Orton and I together were just, we're two immature young young guys who loved having fun, you know? Like we enjoyed like traveling on the road. It's crazy. Like we, we you know, you, you always rent cars with your buddies and you travel from city to city. And of course him and I travel together and guys are always zooming out of the arenas to get to the next city, like, I can remember Bob Holly and stuff going, yeah, I think we can make it in two hours and 45 minutes in the next town. He's talking to somebody else, you know, and me and Orton just took our time. We'd stop and stop at like a 24 hour Walmart or something <laughs> because we needed to get some shaving cream or something like, and just take our time, you know, and stop at a convenience store and, you know, get a slush puppy or something, you know, something stupid. But um, <laughs> that, that, you know, those, those times were fun. And what happened was, when the the whole idea was coming to evolution triple h started getting us together on the house show loop so we went from me and orton having a great old time uh you know from city to city turned into uh car rides with triple h rick flair and both myself and randy yeah. um which was cool but like our young you know our young bunch was kind of cramping our style you know like <laughs> like man we, and, and, now flair flair wasn't flair was always cool like in fact i think that was like the deciding factor where like triple h is like man i gotta cut the cord in this and he referred to it in that documentary about ruth discretion and stuff the little he was like i wanted to kick him out of the car i want to kick him out you know throw him over a bridge or something and, and like it makes sense because we're like man we're like young kids you know like are we there yet that type of stuff and if it <laughs> we're, we're being annoying kids you know flair really flair really loves the um uh, he's got he's he's still a kid in the heart himself rick flair sure. you know so with, with these like and i said it a million times it seems like but with these car rides we're supposed to be talking about the x's and o's and the the, the this formation of the group and what it means and stuff turned into 
immature hour for me and Orton in the back seat. Like literally, the only thing that was missing was Triple H turning around when you got like you know basically I'm gonna just pull this car over and spank you guys. Like that's that's the only thing that was missing. And then and then that if it wasn't that us be, being immature idiots. Um, it'd be like Ric Flair, like you know, asking us about like oh the girls we met, you know, a few nights before or something. And then you know, we I'm start- sure Rick was trying to pick him up with you guys too. Well, he'd always, he'd, he'd but the, the, the conversation would go in that direction. That was not the, the direction that Triple H wanted to go. It was supposed to be more towards like, you know, X's and O's and talking yeah. about the business and stuff. And like after a couple of loops, a couple of car rides, <laughs> he probably like, like many uh, who rode with me and Orton probably one that he'd, he'd, like you said, he wanted to kick us out of the car, kick us over a bridge or something. So, so was it Triple H who finally said, "Sorry, Mark," or was it Vince? Well, no, no, it was it was if you you know in the documentary too. Like um, for me, it was like a relief to hear you know like the real thing that happened. And she said, "I told Vince he's not for the group," and Vince said, "Yeah, he is." And he goes, "No, me, Rick, he." What I didn't like is he included Rick in that. I mean, me and Rick felt he wasn't good for the group, like. Rick never had a problem. I think it was, it was, it was triple H, you know, like, um, but he, he's the one to pretty much put the ax down, you know? And, um, you know, he talked about it, you know, we were supposed to bring our suits to film the vignettes and stuff and they filmed it. Um, and I, I guess he kind of like knew I wasn't going to be in it, you know, so it kind of sucked, you know, but, um, and it, and I, but like I said, I was so mature that I, I didn't even realize what was going on really. You know, it was like, it, it's like, when you're an athlete and stuff, when you're young and an athlete and you have that, like, you just, you just feel like you can create anything you want. Like, sure. you know, so. You, you've got to be able to look back now with hindsight and go, geez, that would have been a really big opportunity for my wrestling career. Oh, ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Every time I see Batista in one of these uh, direct TV commercials or whatever, or these, uh, or these, uh, you know, for his movies, I think about that, but like we, we're, we're different ty- kind of wrestlers, you know, and, and, uh, he might have fit the enforcer thing a lot better than I will, you know, like, um, so I don't, I don't, you know, looking back on it now, like, you know, you can, um, you can always say what if and stuff, but it always, you know, forever go back and forth, but it's one of these things where was it good to have him bad, you know, because then I went to Mexico and like, I, I, you know, and, you became a mega star there. And I don't know if a lot of people realize that you were a huge star in Mexico. Yeah. You know, it, on TV. I, it, it kind of, I kind of flew under the radar for a while because I had a name change. I was Marco Corleone, you know, and, and, uh, you said that with the most American non Spanish accent ever. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, if I said like American to be like Marco Corleone, you know, or, but like in Mexico it was Marco Corleone and, uh, with the a Marco Corleone Corleone. and, uh, <laughs> And that, 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 that was kind of like, you know, that the, the one thing in that whole documentary WWE, which they didn't really express was like, or talk about the, you know, they, they have to do it because it's WWE videos where it's not the end all be all. Like they act as if it's like, you're not an evolution. Then I, you know, I'm roadkill, you know, like it didn't happen yeah. like that, you know, like, yeah, we parted ways. I got the, the dreaded call from Johnny Laronitis and I got released and, you know, but like not too much shortly after that, I discovered Mexico, you know, and kept, kept going, you know, so. 